stupid idiot. You can't snort Xanax. It's not water soluble. People will tell you that all the time. This is not water soluble. You can't snort it. It's a waste of Xanax. You're an idiot. That is some truth to that. If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. Xanax. So when you feel Xanax, you can actually tell that this really isn't a water soluble pill. Some pills feel real grainy. Xanax itself does not. And Xanax isn't water soluble. So when you are snorting Xanax and crushing up Xanax and snorting it, I snorted Xanax a few times. I always had a very bad cocaine issue. So mine was also the thing I like to just put stuff up my nose. And that was my addiction. I was fascinated with putting things up my nose. It gave me a placebo effect even, even if, when it came to something like Xanax. So it wasn't something that necessarily got me higher, harder, all that. Now, when you are crushing it up, and you do snort it, it does change it somewhat. So it's not dissolving in your stomach as quickly because you have to remember when you're snorting it, it's getting collected in all the saliva back here. It's going to end up going back down into your stomach. It's going to get dissolved into your system and it's going to go through your system and you're going to feel the effects of it. So does it affect you a little bit differently? Yes. Anytime you take a pill and you crush up a pill and put it in a powder form versus a normal pill form, it's going to affect your system differently. So there are some differences if you snort this, but it's not a high like some people think. It's not like doing a line of cocaine or doing a line of meth and you're going to have a high of that sense. No, but it does hit your system a little bit differently. For me, it hit my system like a little bit harder. There was no easy gradual into it. It was a boom. It's in your system now. And also, you got to be careful too is when you are getting Xanax, if you're not using prescribed Xanax and you're starting to crush up anything that's uh, made from a pill press and say you got it from your local friendly uh, corner store uh, pharmacist that sits down at the uh, at the corner, it's probably going to be mixed with some stuff because, well, they're not a pharmacist and it's probably not going to be true Xanax. And that's one of the things that you have to remember whenever it comes down to. I mean, there is a thing out there with a lot of people that pop different pills. You snort different things. You got to be careful what you're getting. If you're getting it from a dealer and not a pharmacist, that alone is dangerous even enough in itself because it can be mixed with fentanyl. It can be mixed with so many different things. And you can go on to Amazon, you can go onto the internet and you can buy a pill press. So you're essentially being your own pharmacist creating pills and selling those. So you got to be careful what you're getting because you can OD. If it's fentanyl and you do too much of that, well, that's one of the most dangerous drugs there is out there. And it's not even a benzo, it's an opiate. Uh, so it's going to affect your system completely differently. And people don't realize that. But when you're crushing up Xanax, people will say, hey, it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's not water soluble. That's true. If it's not water soluble, it means it's not dissolving in the water. It doesn't break down with just the water. It does, though, in a powder form. It will wreck your nasal cavity. I mean, there's a lot of destruction it can do up here. Um, there are almost like that mental addiction. I'm very, very big on mental addiction because I, part of the thing with cocaine was I wanted to snort it. I, I never wanted to make it into crack or anything else, even though if I would have, that would have gave me probably a different and stronger high. But it was a more almost the process of snorting something. And so when it came to any of the pills out there, I was always kind of like, hey, well, shoot, let me just crush this up and see what happens. And it wasn't the best trial and error, and it was extremely dangerous. So, I mean, anybody out there struggling with addiction, the first step to do is just let everyone know, hey, I'm an addict and I need help. I'm an addict and I need help. And get the help that you need. When you crush this up, though, it does hit your system differently because of the powder. Other than that, though, it's not going to get you higher. It's not going to make you feel any different. Um, it will eventually almost like it mellows out to what Xanax typically feels like once it's dissolved into your system. Uh, if you do have anxiety, it's going to calm it down. But snorting, it's not the way to go. But you can snort Xanax. Does it burn when it gets in your nose? It does. It doesn't burn quite like meth does. When I've snorted meth three times in my life, whenever I snorted that, it felt like I was snorting like glass shards and it just burned here. And it made my eyes water and it had a different drip to it. Uh, Xanax, it didn't give me any kind of real drip at all. It burned a little bit, but it wasn't a massive burning sensation like meth was. And it wasn't also the same kind of sensation that cocaine was. Um, all three of these are extremely dangerous things. Uh, they can destroy your nasal cavity. They can destroy your sinuses. Your sense of smell goes just to crap. I can attest to that. My sense of smell is horrible. I can't smell much at all. And even in the summertime when my sinuses act up, I mean, it just starts dripping out because, well, I've most likely have a lot of damage that's done up here and I have to still at some point probably go to the doctor and get some x-rays to see what all is going on up into my nasal cavities, especially since I've moved up to Idaho. I can tell that there's differences up here and we don't think about that as an addict when we're doing it. It's sad though, because you see stuff and, and 
even when it's a white pill and it's crushed up, people can play it off as different drugs and you have to be careful about that. I mean, it's just, it's scary and, and we're over controlled by this addiction of just wanting to do drugs sometimes. And I was that way. I was just constantly chasing that high. And once I got high, especially off of Coke, I didn't want to lose it. So if anybody ever told me, hey, this will keep you high, I, I tried it. And that was one of the dumbest things I could do. But when you're an addict, you don't think straight. You're not thinking correctly at all with your head. You're thinking about, I need that next dopamine rush. I don't want to lose this feeling I have. You don't want the dopamine drop because you know that the depression is going to hit. You know that you're going to feel like crap. And you're going to end up hating life. So the longer that you could keep that high going, the more that you're like, dude, I'm on top of it. I'm in control of it. So, I mean, snorting Xanax, yeah, it had some of the placebo effect up here. It did hit your system a little bit differently, but it's not like it's hitting your, your system in that sense of it's it's going to be this massively different high or different feeling that you're going to get. And all it's going to do is a lot more damage to your nasal cavity. If you're prescribed Xanax, please don't snort it because that's not how it's designed to be taken. It's not going to help with your anxiety quicker. I've went through that at a point with my anxiety where I thought, man, if I snort this, it's just going to hit me so much quicker and it's going to be so much better and it's going to get rid of my anxiety. And it was almost like my addiction speaking uh, more than it was my anxiety. And that's why you have to be open, especially if you're going to a therapist and you're getting prescribed any kind of meds, let them know if you're an addict. A good therapist, a good doctor will understand what addiction is versus what a drug of choice is versus what a drug that somebody doesn't actually abuse is. I'm a firm believer that not every addict abuses every single drug out there. For me, alcohol and cocaine are just, I, I can't. It's not the it's not the thirtieth one or the tenth line I do. It's the first. It's just having it in my hand. But when it comes to Adderall, which is a stimulant that's also very addictive to people, for me that's a tool, and I don't abuse it, and it doesn't even comprehend in my brain to abuse it. So again, life is trial and error. Don't be afraid of medication, but just remember the more that you do abuse it, the different the effects will be. Some, and you know what? If you're not using it as prescribed, you may not need it. And it may just be the addiction side of it. If you're struggling with addiction, I got a links down below to NA and AA. Ask for help. I mean, I get a lot of people who go, I'm, I'm addicted to this. I need help. What do I do? And ask for help. Just ask for help. Go, hey, I'm struggling with this. I need help with this. I don't know what to do. It's controlling my life and I need help. And that's where that first step hits. Just admitting and knowing that you have an addiction problem is where it all begins at. And our road to recovery then is different for everybody. And some people NA works, some people AA works. I've been to both. AA actually helped me out tremendously. But you have to also be open-minded. But you matter. You got this. And I know that it's a struggle. So if you're out there and you're considering snorting a bunch of Xanax, don't. It's not going to make your anxiety go away any, any, any differently in a better form, in a better way. All it's going to do is destroy your nasal cavity. It will hit your system a little bit quicker because it's in a powder form and it's in your mucus and saliva. So it goes through your system quicker, but that's about it. If you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. It's all about just sharing trial and error, the experiences that we've been through life so that nobody feels that they're going through life alone. And knowing this, that you, you matter.